Hello friend and welcome back to my channel. My name is Cotton and this is Cotton's Creations 42 and today we are going to be making this adorable pouch. Look at how cute this thing is. Oh, I love it. So the bottom part is crocheted and the top part is crocheted and then the middle is going to be knit in the round with some stranded knitting. I do go over in this tutorial how to do all of these things, obviously, but if you need more in-depth help with the knitting in the round or the stranded knitting in the round, I'm going to link some tutorials down below that I did with my hats that should help clear up any questions you might have. And if there's any other questions that you have, please feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will answer them in a timely manner. But yeah, if you are ready, let's get knitting and crocheting. Okay, so here's our example. Look at how cute this thing is. I cannot even, oh, it's so great. And I love how when you fold over the top, it looks like a mushroom. Look at that, it's so cute. Ah, oh, I love it so much. All right, let's see, you can put all your little knickknacks in there. This is what the back side looks like. A hot mess like usual, but that's all good. That's why it's on the inside, right? <laughs> ah, it's, it's just so cute. I love it. Okay, so let's take a look at all of the things we're going to need to make this. All right, so the first thing we're going to need is a 5.5 millimeter hook or an eye hook for the crochet portions of our pouch. The second thing we're going to need is a size 7 or 4.5 millimeter circular needle for the knitting portions of our pouch. Now, you might be curious as to why these are different sizes, and my answer to you for that is just because that's the way that it worked out. Um, I like the proportions together with the knitting and the crochet and the way that they look. If you wanted to use different size hooks and needles, by all means, please go right ahead. It is your creation. We're also going to need some scissors, a darning needle, a bobby pin, and a stitch marker for our knitting. And then we are going to need some white cotton yarn. This is just um, cotton yarn I had. I'm not sure what that's from. Um, and then I've got some Yarnspiration Karen Cotton Cakes in the Calico Flowers colors. And what I do with this is I take all the colors apart and I make them into their own little balls like this. Um, and then it makes it more easily usable and I have I love this yarn. I have been using this yarn for years um, I make rainbow unicorn hats out of it and it's delightful Highly recommend it. Love it. Um, it's not hundred percent cotton. It is 60% cotton and 40% acrylic, but it's great for this purpose So yeah, this is everything we're gonna need. Let's go ahead and get started All right So the things we're gonna need are our crochet hook some green yarn for the bottom and then a stitch marker. I like to use bobby pins when I'm crocheting for my stitch markers. It just makes life easy. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, make a slip stitch. Then we are going to chain four and join with a slip stitch. One, two, three, Four. Alternately, you could also use a magic circle for this if you wanted to. I just like the slips. I just like the chain four and the slip stitch because it just it's easy. And then we will join with the slip stitch. Slip that through both. Chain one. And now I'm going to place my marker like so. And now I am going to crochet ten single crochets into this chain space. So you do a single crochet by going through the chain space, pulling up a loop, pull a loop through both of those. Pull up a loop, pull a loop through both. That's two, three, and ten. All right, now we're going to join with a slip stitch to where our um, stitch marker is. So pull that loop, pull through both, chain one. And then place your marker like so. Now, um, I'm not going to be chain doing a crochet, a single crochet into that chain space that I just did the um, the slip stitch into. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip it and I'm gonna go to the next one. And we are gonna do a two single crochets into each 
single crochet all the way around like so. So we do one and we go back into that same space, two, one, two, and 20. You want to have 20 stitches when you're all done. So make sure you're not chaining, uh, you're not doing um, two more single crochets into that slip stitch right there because we don't want that. Um, so make sure you're counting. Yep. So now we're going to do a slip stitch and a chain one. Chain one. All right, next row. Now we are going to do one single crochet into this next single crochet, and then we're going to do two single crochets into the second single crochet like this. We'll do one, two, and then the third one into that same single crochet there. We'll do it again. Let's do one, two, and three. One, two, and three. 29 and 30, awesome. All right, that's what we want after our third row. So now we're gonna do another increase row because we wanna get to 40. So we're gonna do almost the exact same thing, but instead we are going to do one, two, and then one and two into there. So we do one single crochet, one single crochet, one and two single crochets all the way around. We do one single crochet, one single crochet, one and two all the way around and that'll increase us into 40 and then that's gonna be the end of our bottom part and then we're gonna start building up the walls. Yay! All right, we just finished that last row and I did a slip stitch and now I'm gonna chain two because we are going to start doing half double crochets. Um, we should have 40 stitches. So let's go ahead and count. One, two, three, 40. 40, awesome. So I have 40 stitches and I did my chain two. And now we are gonna do 40 half double crochets into each of these single crochet stitches. And a half double crochet is super easy. You just yarn over on your hook you go through your stitch, pull up a loop, and then you're gonna pull a loop through all three stitches, just like that. So yarn over, go through your stitch, pull up a loop, pull through all three. Yarn over, go through your stitch, pull up a loop, pull through all three. We're gonna do this for three rows. Eight, three, nine, 40, awesome, okay. So we are at 40 stitches. We have finished our three rows of our half double crochets. And now, before we go any further, since we are gonna be switching over to knitting, I am gonna go ahead and weave in these ends so that I don't have to deal with them later. Ha 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 ha. Make my life easier. It's also super easy to close up this gap here um, in the bottom if you just go around all of the stitches like this underneath all of the little single crochets. And then just pull it tight as you go. I like to go around twice um, in one direction and then go around the other direction to lock it in place. All right, we have our little bowl. Looks like a tiny yarmulke. It's very cute. It's the bottom of the bottom of our mushroom. And now it is time to pick up all of these stitches for knitting. So we are gonna wanna take our size seven circular needles, pick a spot, any spot. I'm left-handed, so um, I'm gonna go this direction. You might find it easier to go this direction if you're right-handed. Um, let's see. If you're right-handed, you are going to want to hold the needle in your right hand. You're going. So what we're gonna do is we are picking up only the front of 
the, the front loop of each stitch. And if you're right-handed, you're going to want to take your needle and you're going to want to go through the top of the stitch, out through the bottom, top of the stitch, out through the bottom, top of the stitch, out through the bottom. Like so, all the way around, you're going to want to pick up every stitch. Hopefully you have 40. If you have more than 40 or fewer than 40, it's all good. It's your creation, so you get to make it however you like. Um, if you're left-handed, like me, you're going to want to go through the bottom of the stitch up through the top, like so. Bottom of the stitch up through the top. Bottom of the stitch up through the top. And this just makes our uh, front loop stitch that we're picking up to knit with, it puts it in the right direction for, um, you know, optimal knitting, in my opinion. Your, your opinion may vary. <laughs> this is just how I like it. So, yep, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pick up all of these stitches. And then we will get started on our knitting. And we're going to go straight into the chart when we get started because um, there's grass in the beginning of the chart. The mushroom's right on top of the grass. So we are going to get right into it when we come back. All right. I have picked up all 40 stitches around. And now we are going to go ahead and start our knitting. So we are going to need for this section um, our chart, which I will put up on the screen here. We're going to need some white yarn. We're going to need our green yarn. We're going to need some yellow for the mushroom and some red for the mushroom. Awesome. Okay, but we're going to start with the white because that's the one that we need right now. And we're also going to need our stitch marker. So I'm going to go ahead and place that there. Now it doesn't really matter where on the bottom of your um, pouch you start your knitting if you care you can always find the beginning and put the beginnings together but ultimately to me it doesn't make too much of a difference um, and we are going to go ahead and we're going to knit to um, stitch 14 I believe it is and then we're going to start our chart there so let's go ahead and get started with our white yarn here you can make a slip knot if you want to I just like to um, lay the yarn over so I'll, I'll go through my stitch as if to knit and then I will just knit it like that and then I'll make sure that I don't have my tail yarn and I'm working with my working yarn and I will just knit till I get to 14 stitches 14 all right so I've made it to the 14th stitch and I'm going to go ahead and put another little stitch marker on there um, because this is where I'm going to want to start my chart and now I am going to knit, it looks like, three white, so one, two, three, and then I'm going to have two grass, one mushroom, and then two grass. So we'll do one, oh wait, <laughs> you know what I forgot? I want to add my green yarn on right now before I do that. And how I'm going to add my green yarn back on is I'm literally, I'm just going to lay it over my white working yarn like this. Make sure that I have a nice long tail to weave in later. And also in case I um, end up pulling it, I don't want it to come out very easily. So I'll have a nice tail. So I just lay that across my working yarn there. And then I'm going to go ahead and just knit. And that kind of holds it in place. So we'll do one, two, three. You know what, I'm going to go ahead and put my yellow yarn on there at the third one, the third white one, because we want that there too. So we're going to go ahead and add our yellow yarn right there onto our third stitch of white. So now I am going to be knitting two green, one yellow, two green. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I have the correct green yarn like so and I can put it over here so that I don't get them as mixed up it's a little bit tricky working with oh excuse me working with three different colored yarns so take your time um, you can totally do it I believe in you so we're gonna do one two green 
Now we're going to do our yellow, like so. Just do that yellow one. And we're going to do two more green. One, two. And now we're going to take our white and we're going to go ahead and do a stitch in white, like so. And now for this last stitch on my needle here before I move, um, I want to capture my green and yellow yarns because um, I want to lock them in place on this other side here. And how we do that is we just, the green is over, my yellow needs to go over the white yarn to lock it in place. Like, so there we go. So now we, oops, see, and I lost my stitch, but that's okay, I can pick it right back up there. Like I said, it's a little bit complicated working with three yarns and going, moving from crochet to knitting, but you can do it, it's totally doable. Um, I want my yarns to be going the other direction over my white yarn though, I just realized that. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this fall real quick. I will pick up that stitch again. But I'm gonna take my yarns, my green and my yellow yarns, and we're gonna go around so that they are going over my white yarn as if they were coming back this direction. So I want it to go around and over like so. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pick up that crochet stitch there that I dropped. And we're gonna lock those in place like that. Awesome. And now I'm just gonna go behind that stitch. I'm gonna pull my needles around like so. And look at that, we just got our first row of our chart done. Huzzah! It takes a little bit of finagling, it takes a little bit of coordination, but it is totally, totally doable. Okay, I'm going to knit this white all the way back around and I will meet you two stitches from our chart and we will do the next row. Alrighty, so we are back around. And now, since our working yarn for our yellow and green are on the left-hand side here of our chart, and we are on the right-hand side of our chart, we want to get from this side to this side so that we can knit the next couple of stitches. How I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna place my white yarn in front, like so, so that it's out of my way. And then I'm going to slip these stitches all the way over to get to the other side of my chart, like that. I'll go one extra because we are going um, from the left to the right now. We are gonna be doing two green, three yellow, one green. And how we're gonna go ahead and do that is if you need to, you can turn your work around and you can purl those colors, which is totally awesome, awesome way to do it. Um, I like to just knit through the back of the stitch and I will show you how I do that. So I've separated my yellow and my green here so that they're, I don't get them as confused or tangled up. And now how I sti knit backwards, like I said, you can totally you can turn it around and you can purl these stitches like so. Easy peasy. Um, I hate having to turn my work, so I just knit through the back of the stitch basically, and I'll show you how I do that. I take my left hand needle and I put it through the back loop of the stitch, and then I throw my yarn over like so, pull up a loop, let that, let that stitch drop off of the right hand needle. Now we want two greens, so we're gonna go ahead and do that again. Knit that stitch, let it drop. Awesome, now I'm gonna change over to my yellow. We are gonna knit three, so through the back loop. Throw that yarn, let it drop. Through the back loop. Through the back loop, like so, awesome. That's our three, and now we're gonna do one more green like so. 
awesome. And now we've just finished knitting that part of the chart. So now I'm going to go ahead and tighten up these guys a little bit because they're getting kind of loose with all this finagling we're doing. But now I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch back to where I put my white yarn. Like so. Bring my yarn to the back. And I'm going to go ahead and knit these couple of white stitches here. One, two. Slip my stitch marker. One. And now I'm going to, on this stitch, um, two, these two white stitches here, I am going to capture my yarns again my green and my yellow so that they are locked in place. I'm going to take them and I'm going to wrap them around the back like so, so that they are laying over my working yarn. And then I'm just going to lock that in place. That's That looks really silly to me. I don't think I want them laying over that direction. I think that's that's not what I want. Let's try that again. Let's bring them over this way. Maybe we always want them going from left to right. I think that might be correct. Okay. Lay them over the top, left to right. So one, two. And now, since I've already knit all of these stitches here, I'm just going to slip them. I'm just slip, 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 slip. Ta-da! And now we make sure that our float, that's not going to be our white yarn, as this is called a float. Um, our float is nice and loose because we don't want it making um, our tension too tight in the back and scrunching up our, our cute little mushroom. So we might want to make sure our float is nice and loose and it looks like it is. And I'll probably pick this up. Um, I don't like to have floats that are more than four stitches long. So I'll probably pick this up uh, when I do this green stitch here in the next row. But we'll see. I might totally forget too. You just never know. All right, I'm going to knit back around to the other side and I will meet you there. All right, so we are ready to do row three of our chart. And since all of our, all of our yarns are on the right hand side now, we don't have to do any slipping for this row. It's just every other row, most likely you'll have to do, we'll have to do some stitch slipping. So we are doing, it looks like, a green, a white, four yellows, and a green. All right. So let's get up here. We're gonna do our first green here. Make sure I've got the right yarn. Awesome sauce. So we do a green and then I'm going to pick up that float, that white one, when I knit this white stitch here. I did remember, huzzah. <laughs> and now we're going to do our yellow. Make sure we're not on our tail and that we have our working yarn. So we're going to do four yellow. One, two, three, four, and then we're going to do one green, one green, and then white. And that was the last green one we have to do, I believe. So now let's go ahead and capture those yarns. Over, we'll put them over from the left to the right over our yarn. Lock that in place. Awesome. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut this green yarn. I'm not going to cut my yellow yarn. I'm only going to cut my green yarn. Unlike when I was doing my test one and I cut the wrong color. Let me tell you how annoying that is. Just making extra ends for myself to weave in later. <laughs> But I cut my green yarn because we are all done with our green color here. Yay. And so I will meet you um, back around at the other side. Awesome sauce. 
All right, we are back around. Time to do our next row. So I am going to go ahead and knit the white um, up until we get real close to the, the yellow. I'll probably stop right about here. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my white yarn in the front since I'm going to have to slip a couple of these stitches. That green yarn got really long there. I'm not sure what's happening. It's fine. Anyway, we're going to slip a couple of a couple of these stitches because we are going to be doing one, two, three yellows. So I'll go ahead and slip over to the first yellow. All right, so make sure I've got the right yarn. And we're going to go ahead and either turn our work in purl for three stitches, or we're we going to do our back loop knitting. One, two, three. And then we're going to go ahead and slip back to our white yarn. We're going to lock our We're going to lock our yellow yarn in place by putting it over our working yarn from the left to the right. Lock that in place. Knit those two stitches of white. Then we're going to slip those three yellow stitches we just did. And then continue on with our white, making sure we have a nice loose float in the back. We don't want it too tight now, do we? No, we do not. All right, I'll meet you back here for the next part of the chart. All right, so this this section of the chart is going to be easy peasy. We are going to be doing two yellow stitches, um, these two, the two on the right. And we are going to be adding our red yarn over here to the left so that it's in place where we want it for the next row where we are going to need it, which is fantastic. This stitch just seems so huge to me. There is going to be some finagling I'm doing later to uh, make sure all of my stitches are the right size, but that's fine. No worries. All right, so we are going to knit up here to our two yellow stitches that we're going to knit. And then we're going to go ahead and knit those two yellow stitches. One and the two. And we are going to knit this white stitch. I'm going to go ahead and lock my yellow stitch in place here because I don't need it out very far. Um, I don't want it to show too much, so I'm going to go ahead and do it closer in. And then I am going to, on this fourth white stitch, I'm going to take my red and I'm going to go ahead and lock it in place like so. Yes, with the tail from the left to the right. Lock it in place. And now when I come back around and I need to do my red stitches, my yarn will already be locked in place, which is fantastic. And I will meet you back here at the beginning of the chart. Okie doke, I am back at the beginning of the chart and now it's time to start our mushroom cap. And our yarns are over on the left hand side. So we're going to go ahead and slip our stitches. I'm going to put my white working yarn in front so that I, it is out of my way. And then we'll go ahead and just slip, slip all the way over until we get to our third white stitch past the yellow. And here is where we're going to start our red. So we're going to go ahead and knit these or purl them. You can turn your work in purl. I'm going to knit through the back loop. One, two, three. And now I'm going to knit two yellows. One and two. Now I'm going to do three reds. And inside those three reds, I am going to capture my yellow yarn. 
so that I don't have to um, have such a long float on it. So we'll do one red. And now I'm going to capture my yellow yarn by making sure that it is over the top of my red yarn here, which is kind of confusing because they're both red at that point. <laughs> uh, uh, yes, I locked it in place. Good. Okay. And now I finish the third red mushroom like so. So I locked my yellow yarn in place. So I don't have to worry about it. I just have to lock my red yarn in place when I come by with the white. I'll go ahead and do that. So we'll bring our white yarn in the front. We'll knit this stitch, move our stitch marker. Now I'm going to go ahead and lock my red yarn in place. I should probably, there we go. Okay. Yep, it's over there. So one and two. And now we're going to just slip stitch or slip all of these stitches. I keep saying slip stitch, which in crochet is a totally different thing, right? <laughs> we're going to slip stitch all of these stitches. No, we're going to slip all of these stitches over to the side, over to the other side and make sure our white float is nice and long. We will go ahead and pick up this float on the next round. But we don't want it to be tight, so we'll make sure it's nice and loose. And then continue as normal. And I will meet you back here for the next row. All right, we are ready to do our seventh row of the chart. And this is going to be our last really complicated row with three colors. So let's go ahead and get right into it. We're going from the right to the left with everything, so that makes it a little bit more a little bit easier. All right, so we have got, we're gonna do, that one's white, and then we're gonna be doing one, two reds, one, two white, one, two yellow, one, two white, one, two red. So we have a white. Now we're gonna make sure we've got our red correct. We're gonna do one, two reds, now we're going to do one white. Now we're going to do another white, but I'm going to pick up that float that's behind it so that it is captured. Like so. Fantastic. Awesome. Remembering. Now I'm going to do two yellow. One, two yellow. Now we're going to do one, two white. And there's going to be a big red float that we're going to need to pick up next time. And that's fine. Feel free to take the time to untangle your yarns if you need to, because it will make your life easier. <laughs> so we're gonna make sure that red float is nice and loose. And we'll do our one, two reds. Now we need to capture the white and, or the red and the yellow. Um, that was our last yellow, so that's awesome. So go ahead and lay those over our working yarn from, you know what, I'm gonna do one more stitch of white first and then we're gonna lay those over our working yarn from left to right, like so. And then we'll just lock those in place. Awesome sauce. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut my yellow yarn. It goes green, yellow, red. <laughs> As if you're diffusing a bomb, right? Cut our yellow yarn. Get that out of our way. Awesome. And now I will meet you back around at the other side. All right, friend, we are on row eight of our chart. And our red working yarn is all the way on the left-hand side. So we're going to go ahead and put our white working yarn in front and go ahead and slip all those stitches to get to the other side. Okay, so we are going to be doing one, two, three red one, two, three, four white, 
one, two, three, one, two, three, red, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Yep, that's right. I'm trying to confuse myself, I see. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and you can turn your work in pearl if you need to. I'm just going to knit through the back, st back stitch, back of the stitch, one, two, and three. Then I'm going to slip these four that are supposed to be white. Make sure I have a nice loose float. And I'm also going to pick up this float from below. One, two, three. Awesome. Put our working yarn in front. Capture our red yarn like so. Slip, slip, slip. Knit, 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 knit. Slip, slip, slip. Awesome. Look at that. It's coming together. All right, I'll meet you back here for the ninth row of our chart. All right, we are on the ninth row of our chart and we all of our working yarns are on the right hand side, so that's awesome. So let's go ahead and get started. Looks like we're doing one white, one red, one white, and then six red, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then one white with a nice loose float that we will pick up in the next round. One red, and then a white, and then we're gonna capture our red yarn like so, from the left to the right, over our working yarn. And then I will meet you back around here for row 10 of our chart. Okay, so row 10 of our chart, and our red yarn is on the opposite side now, so we're gonna go ahead and start there, and we'll slip all the way over. Now, we are going to be doing six, and then one white, and then three red. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. That's going to be a white, so we're going to slip it. And then a one, two, three. Slip that stitch, slip our slip marker, stitch marker. Slip that stitch. Go ahead and knit one. And then we're gonna lock our yarn in place. By Placing it over our working yarn, like so. Slip one, slip two, slip three. I'm going to knit this. I'm also going to pick up that white float from the last round. And then I'm going to slip, 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 and slip. Make sure I have a nice long float, like so. And then I'll meet you back here for row 11. We're almost done with our chart. Huzzah! All right, so for this round, we are going to be closing up our mushroom cap a little bit. We, so this one's gonna be white, and then we are going to be doing five red, one white, and then two red. 
and everything is on the right hand side so I don't need to slip any stitches. And we'll do one and then we're going to do two. And now we're going to do five red. One, two, three, four, five. Make sure our float's nice and loose. Also, we're going to pick up that white float from the last stitch round. Knit all that together. One. Very nice. And then we're going to do one and two. I'm going to knit this one. And then we're going to capture our red. Only two more rows of the chart. So we'll come back around. I'll meet you back around here for row 12. And after that, it's all smooth sailing, basically. I mean, there's definitely still more to do on this pouch, but the hard part will be over in two rows, y'all. We have got this. <laughs> all right, so I am one stitch from my chart, and I have to slip stitch over to the other side. Slip stitch. I have to slip my stitches over to the other side because that's where my red working yarn is. And to now we are going to be doing, these two are going to be white at the ends again. Um, and we are going to be doing one, two red, one white, one, two, three red. So we've got one, two red. This one's going to be white, so I'm going to slip it. And then one, two, three red. Fantastic. Now I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch back over to my white working yarn. Bring that in the front. Knit. Go ahead. We're going to knit this first. Oh, you know what? I need to capture my red yarn. Ha ha. Good catch. Good catch. I didn't thought I didn't have to come back and do that. Capture my red yarn here right before this first stitch that I'm going to make white. Awesome, like that. Then we're going to do one, two, three slip stitches. Is there a float down here I can pick up? I believe there is. So we'll pick up that white float when we make this white stitch. Then I'm going to slip, slip those two. And now I am going to knit back around and we have one more row of our chart. It'll be row 13. Huzzah! Almost done with the hard part, you guys. Alrighty, we are at the last row of our chart. We are at row 13 where we are just going to be doing one, two, three, four reds. And everything is on the right hand side. So we don't need to do any stitch slipping. Let's go ahead and we'll just get our white all the way up here. Now we're going to change to red and we're going to do one, two, three, four, and then a white. And then we're going to capture our red yarn one last time. Oh no. And we're going to pick up those stitches that just pulled out. <laughs> um, Yeah, awesome. One, two, and three. All right, so our chart is done. And what that means is now we are going to finish this, this row. And then we are going to do nine more rows of white. And then we're going to bind off. So I am going to go ahead and finish this row, do my nine more rows, nine more rows. Uh, and then I will meet you back here for our bind off. The hard part's done. Good job, guys. You totally did it. I'm proud. All right. I will see you back here when we are done with our nine rows of knitting. All right. I have reached the end of my nine rows of knitting. And let's take a look. Look at how cute this is. Oh, I can't even. It is adorable. All right. So now we are going to cast off our stitches from our knitting needles and then we're going to pick it up with crochet. So how we're going to do our cast off is we're going to use Jenny's super stretchy cast off. 
because it's nice and stretchy, stretchy and it's easy to crochet into. How you do that is you knit one stitch, you yarn over, knit a second stitch, then you take that first stitch you knit and that yarn over and you just slip them off your right hand needle so that they are captured by that second stitch that you knit. And then you're going to do another yarn over, knit another stitch, slip those two stitches. Let's do one more. You yarn over, knit one stitch, slip those two stitches. If you have enough room on your needles. Can you, did you see that? That was crazy. Let's try that again. Let's try that again. So yarn over, knit that stitch, have enough loose tension that you can slip those over that needle there. All right, I will meet you back here when we have one stitch left on our needles and we will pick up our crochet again. All right, so I have one stitch left on my knitting needle, so I am actually all done with my knitting portion of our little pouch. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab my crochet hook and I'll put it through that last loop there. Now what I wanna do is I want to join this in the round with a slip stitch. So I'm gonna find the very first knit stitch, which is gonna be this little corner right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and just do a slip stitch and then a chain one and then I'm going to place my marker. And now I am going to crochet all the way around into these lovely uh, Jenny Super Stretchy Cast Off that look just like crochet stitches a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and start with that one that I just did a slip stitch in because I wanna have 40. So I am going to do 40 single crochets all the way around and I will meet you back here when I'm all done. All right, I finished my row of single crochets and now I'm going to go ahead and do a join with a slip stitch and a chain one. And now I'm going to decrease a little bit because I wanna create a little bit of a pinch point here before we do our um, opening for our pouch. And how we're gonna do that is I'm gonna crochet three and then I'm gonna crochet two together. So let's do a little bit of that together. So we'll do one, two, three, and then to crochet two together, you simply go through one stitch, pull up a loop, go through the next stitch next to it, pull up a loop, and then you pull a loop through all three, and that turns one stitch, two stitches into one stitch. And then we'll do that again. We'll do one, two, three, and then we're gonna decrease by one. So we're going to go through, pull up a loop, go through the next stitch, pull up a loop. We have three, sti three stitches on our needle, our hook. Pull one loop through all three and continue on until you get to the end of the row. Okay, finish that decrease round. Now I'm gonna join with a slip stitch and chain one. And now for this next round, all I'm going to do is crochet, single crochet all the way around. And then when we get to the next row, we will start our, um, what is the word I'm looking for? It's not belt loops. <laughs> holes for our drawstring. But yeah, next round we're gonna do our holes for our drawstring. So single crochet all the way around. And I'll meet you back here when we're all done with that. All right, I'm at the end of that row of single crochets. I'm gonna do my slip stitch chain one. And now we are going to make our holes to put our drawstring in. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna do two single crochets, then we're gonna chain two, and we're gonna skip two. So let's do a couple of those together. So we're gonna do one, two, chain two, skip two. So I'm gonna skip one and two stitches and then I'm gonna come over to this one and I'm gonna start over again. I'm gonna do one, two, chain two, skip two. One, two, 
chain two, skip two. All right, I'll meet you back here when we are all done with this row. All right, so I miscounted somewhere and that's totally fine, but here at the end I have two extra stitches and since I only want to have eight holes for my drawstring, I'm gonna go ahead and just do two extra single crochets here at the end and not worry about it and then we'll do our chain one slip stitch and now what we're gonna do for our next row is we are going to two single crochets and then three single crochets into each chain space so one single crochet two single crochets and then three single crochets into this chain space So we're increasing again. So we'll do one, two, one, two, three. And we're gonna do that all the way around and then we're gonna knit, we're gonna crochet one more row of single crochets and then I will meet you back here for the row after that. All right, so I finished my second row of single crochets after we did the first row with um, filling in the chain spaces. And now we are going to do another row just like this where we do the chain spaces. Um, you don't have to do it this way if you don't want to. You could do just a regular increase row, um, but I like to do it. I think it may, helps it with the look of looking kind of like a mushroom at the top and it helps it fold over nicely. So we're just gonna do it this way. So we'll do our slip stitch, chain one, and then we are going to crochet three single crochets. So one, two, three. Then we're gonna chain two, skip two. Chain two, skip two. Just like that, so one, two, three, chain two, skip two. Now, when you are done with this row, we are gonna be doing the exact same thing we did in this row. So we are gonna crochet into single crochets, all of these ones, and then into each chain space, we're going to do three. So we'll do one, two, three, one, two, three. And then after that, we're going to do one row of single crochet, just like we did up here. And then I will meet you back here for the last couple of rows. Did that make sense? If not, just rewatch it, it'll be fine. <laughs> You've got this. We're doing the things. All right, we are on the last three rows of our pouch and we are going to be repeating the same three rows that we just did. The only difference being we're going to crochet four and then we're going to chain two, skip two on this first row. And then we're going to crochet four, crochet three into each chain space and then we will do one more row of single crochet and then after that, I will meet you back here and we will weave in all of the ends and we will make our drawstring and we will be all done. We're almost done. Ah, oh, so cute. Okay, so I'm going to finish these off camera and then I will be back when it's time to make our drawstring. I'll see you in a bit. All right, I just finished the last stitch and then we'll do this slip stitch. And then I'm gonna go ahead and cut my yarn, pull that out. And now it is time to weave in all of these ends, which I will do in fast motion for you now. <laughs> All right, let's make our drawstring. Now that all of our ends are woven in, that was the hardest part. I hate that part, so I'm glad that's over with. But look at this cuteness. Oh, I can't even. All right, so 
To make our drawstring, you are going to want to pull out approximately 10 feet of yarn. Then you are going to pinch it in the at the end there and you're going to pull off another 10 feet of yarn like so. Then we are going to turn it and pinch it again making a slip knot so that we have three pieces of yarn in our slip knot. Then we're going to take our crochet hook and we're going to pull off another 10 feet of yarn. Excuse me. And now we are going to crochet a chain until we run out of yarn. All right, so I've reached the end of my 10-ish feet, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that yarn there and I'm gonna pull these through. You want to have um, a crochet chain that is at least two and a half to three feet long. Um, a little bit longer is totally fine. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tie a knot in this end, like so. And then I'm gonna take my darning needle and I'm going to take these ends and I'm going to weave them back through that knot to lock them in place like this. Sometimes you have to pull kind of tight. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and go back through again and then I'm going to cut these off and then I'm going to do that on the other side and we're going to weave it through our pouch. Cut that off and now we are going to weave this through our holes we made. So in and then out In, out, in, out, in, and out. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we are now officially done with our adorable mushroom pouch. Look at this. That is so cute. Oh my good gravy. Ah, oh, I can't even. All right. Well, thank you so very much for coming along with me on this adventure to make this adorable mushroom pouch. I have, hope you make one of your own. If you do, please tag me on Instagram. I would love to see it. Um, also, like and subscribe. It really helps my channel. And yeah, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time. Bye.